Hello, my name is Marina Kelly. Uh, welcome to my presentation, Using the OWASP Top 10 as the Foundation for Security and Privacy Programs Across Your Organization. I'm a Technical Director and Data Protection Officer for a Cybersecurity Training Company. So let's jump right into it. Security and privacy programs are essential for organizations. However, creating and maintaining these programs comes with challenges. Organizations require compliance with multiple industry and or government standards and protocols. Continuous innovation brings constant considerations for security and privacy. Staying on top of changing standards and goals is challenging. Standards and regulations can be disjointed and at times seem almost contradictory. So I'm a details person. I read the footnotes in books, nutritional information on food packaging, and even the full text of EULAs. One of my favorite sentences from the OWASP Top 10 2017 is often overlooked and is it not a specific vulnerability or risk. It's from the fifth paragraph on the opening page, right beside the table of contents. It speaks to application security, but I believe it should be expanded to cover security and privacy programs in any organization. We advocate approaching application security as a people, process, and technology problem because the most effective approaches to application security require improvements in these areas. These 24 simple words from, form the basis of today's presentation. GDPR, CCPA, PCI, ISO, and so on. The number of acronyms and the security and privacy frameworks they represent continue to grow. With each new standard comes the governance headaches. Who needs to know what, when, and do what when? Getting your arms around all these is essential, but it is not simple. The cost of not doing so can be high. A combination of fines, lost productivity, legal fees, remediation costs, training costs, lost revenue, and more. You must know the security and privacy related initiatives your organization is responsible for. These can be based on a variety of factors, such as the data you hold and process, your location, the location of your clients, the size of your company, and your industry. You may only have one of these which you must address, but it's more likely that you will have several of these. Each of these comes with its own structure, terminology, and expected results. However, before you go off and start creating a program for each initiative, stop and think. One of the most important ways of ensuring that security and training programs will be more than a check the box structure and will actually improve security and privacy is to avoid silos. When we develop these programs individually, we risk redundancy and gaps. In many instances, your development teams may be the ones hardest hit with unnecessary or ineffective documentation and training. So how do we avoid these security and privacy silos? The key to success is to take a step back and look for the commonalities of governance. What do these standards, regulations, frameworks, and protocols share that can be used to build a simple governance structure that meets the requirements across the board? How do we find these commonalities and build on them to create effective and efficient programs? I suggest that a perfect foundation for this planning is the OWASP Top 10. The OWASP Top 10 focuses first and foremost on data and its protection, a trait it shares with all security and privacy initiatives. Because of this focus, it provides extensive coverage of common areas of weakness and vulnerability in multiple aspects of the entire security and privacy landscape of an organization. OWASP is more than just a vetted listing of common risk and vulnerabilities. Because its depth and its basis in research, as well as its applicability in all types of development environments, 
OWASP serves as an anchor from which to launch your planning and design of a singular governance and compliance operation. So today I want to crosswalk five popular security and privacy, in privacy initiatives many of you may recognize to see how the OWASP top 10 can provide support, direction, and content for their implementation. This will not be a deep dive into each one, but more of an introduction to how you can use a unified approach to simplify and align multiple programs. So let's crosswalk secure by design, privacy by design, the general data protection requirement, California Consumer Protection Act, and the International Organization of Standards 27001 Information Security Management Standard. Secure by Design is a standard in which good software design principles are combined with a security mindset using patterns and best practices. Every decision made about the design, planning, architecting, building, testing, deployment, and maintenance should be driven by a simple question. Is this secure? This means that everyone involved with the creation of a web application, website, or web service, your business analysts, designers, testers, program managers, product managers, support staff, as well as your developers, should have security at the forefront of their decision-making processes. The key risk that Secure by Design helps to battle is security as an afterthought. Designing for security from the beginning helps to avoid the scattershot process of catching and killing bugs as they are found in the wild. Secure by Design has come to the forefront in recent years with the explosion of development for Internet of Things devices. There are guiding principles that we use to implement Secure by Design in the development arena. These principles are shared and supported by the OWASP Top 10 through its suggested prevention and mitigation strategies. So let's look at these two standards to see how they align and focus on how using OWASP can help to support Secure by Design. So here's an example of a matrix that I created that can be used when comp comparing and contrasting two security and or privacy related standards. Down the left hand side are the secure by design principles, while across the top are the 10 vulnerabilities outlined in the OWASP top 10 2017 version. Where there is a correlation between the two, an X is placed at the intersection. As you will see, the OWASP Top 10 directly correlates with all of the guiding principles of Secure by Design. So let's examine the alignment of these two. So first up, we have Keep Security Simple. OWASP emphasizes the use of the simplest methods possible to address security vulnerabilities to make code more easily maintainable and risk easier to spot. A perfect example of this is a recommendation to use less complex data formats that are contained within the mitigation strategies for XML external entities. So we want to avoid using overly complex coding approaches for security. Minimize the attack surface area. Lower your security risk by reducing the size of the attack surface area. Shrinking the size of your attack surface area is one of the quickest, most cost-effective means of improving your organization's security stature, and it is thoroughly supported by the OWASP Top 10. Separation of duties. Create roles with differing levels of trust to which a user is assigned. Broken authentication and broken access control in the OWASP Top 10 are great examples of the direct support for the idea of separation of duties. If you are working in transactional environments, separation of duties is mandated by best practices. Use principle of least privilege. Only give access to the information a person needs to do their job. Principle of least privilege goes hand in hand with separation of duties. Broken access controls and using components with known vulnerabilities specifically emphasize principle of least privilege 
as a mitigation strategy. Principle of least privilege is also another means of minimizing your attack surface area. Use principle of defense in depth. The idea behind defense in depth is that multiple levels of controls that focus on different type of risks offer the best defense. All aspects of the OWASP top 10 encourage the use of multiple control levels to provide the best mitigation. Fail securely. Software applications will fail to process some transactions. It's just a fact of life. Your users will fail occasionally to follow best practices and security. When this occurs, the system should be able to protect users and data by being fault tolerant, failing over to a secure state in which an exception is thrown and a decision is awaited. All mitigation strategies in the OWASP top 10 have at their core the idea of failing securely. Mechanisms to default to a fail-safe state to protect data are encouraged. Do not trust services. Many web applications, websites, and web services are developed using third-party components. Developers should not trust the default configurations of these and always review and update. Since any of the vulnerabilities listed in the OWASP top 10 can occur due to the use of third-party components, reviews of the security settings of all services are a must. Avoid security by obscurity. In development, security by obscurity means trusting that a simple change, such as using encryption or enforcing secrecy and confidentiality of the system's internal design architecture and its flaws, is enough to protect your data. We know from numerous examples that this old school security trick does not work. Developers must think like the enemy and assume the worst, as is encouraged in the OWASP top 10. Fix security issues correctly. Once an issue is found, you must research to determine the full impact, fix it completely, and test that fix. This is one of the founding platforms of the OWASP top 10. A repeatable change management process is key to strong security. Using the same matrix, matrix structure, let's now look at privacy by design. So what is privacy by design? As noted by Deloitte, privacy by design is a framework based on proactively embedding privacy into the design and operation of IT systems, networked infrastructure, and business practices. It is a risk-based approach which anticipates risks and designs countermeasures to respond. It is designed to address multiple data privacy requirements across jurisdictions in an increasingly complex and connected world. It is also known as data protection by design or data protection by default. As was secure by design, everyone involved in the creation of a web application, website, or web service should have privacy at the forefront of their decision-making processes. Privacy by design is gaining traction as we see new data privacy laws and regulations being rolled out across the globe. Just as we saw with Secure by Design, there are guiding principles that we use to implement privacy by design that are supported by the OWASP standard. So let's take a look at the crosswalk between these two standards and focus on how using OWASP can help to implement privacy by design. So as you will see, the OWASP top 10 also directly correlates with all of the guiding principles of privacy by design. So let's examine this alignment. First of all, proactive, not reactive. Preventative, not remedial. Anticipate, identify, and prevent invasive events before they occur. The belief that vulnerabilities are preventable with proper development processes drives the creation of the OWASP top 10. So it is a natural fit with privacy by design. 
Privacy as the default setting. Personal data should be automatically protected in all IT systems or business practices. No added actions should be required by any individual, whether an administrator or a user. OWASP takes a risk-based approach to addressing security vulnerabilities. By doing so, it aligns with best practices in relation to privacy. Privacy embedded into design. Privacy measures should be fully integrated components of systems, never add-ons. Using a secure coding standard like the OWASP Top 10 helps to ensure that privacy is rooted into the core of every application, website, or service you build or implement. Full functionality, positive sum, not zero sum. Both privacy and security are important and no unnecessary trade-offs and system design goals need to be made to achieve both. A logical fallacy that we often see argued in development is that you must choose between privacy and security. It's simply not true. You can achieve both for a win-win situation using the OWASP top 10 to ensure that both are supported. Ensure end-to-end -end security, full system lifecycle protection. Data should be secured throughout its lifecycle. All data should be securely retained as needed and destroyed when it's no longer needed. The OWASP top 10 represents risk across all aspects of the development life cycle. Using it as a foundation ensures this end-to-end -end security. Visibility and transparency, keep it open. Stakeholders should be assured that business practices and technologies are operating according to objectives and subject to independent verification. The OWASP Top 10, in concert with a strong application security and privacy initiative, will help to provide stakeholders with assurances that both security and privacy controls have been thoroughly designed, executed, and tested in a repeatable, risk-based process. And finally, Respect for user privacy. Keep it user-centric. Individual privacy interests must be supported by strong privacy defaults, appropriate notice, and user-friendly options. A crucial means of showing your organization's respect for user privacy is securing their data, especially critical and sensitive data. Using the OWASP Top 10 in the avoidance of the most common risk to security and privacy will help to further that goal. So now that we've seen two, we've seen how to crosswalk to find commonalities between the OWASP top 10 and secure by design and privacy by design frameworks, let's now look at how we can perform a similar exercise to support requirements within regulations and laws. We'll start with the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR. GDPR, a European Union digital privacy law, came into effect in May of 2018. It's a comprehensive law. It includes numerous specific regulations for the implementation of data security, including record keeping, auditing, reporting, the notification of data breaches to regulators and affected individuals, and the transferring of data across EU borders to protect sensitive data, such as health records, bioinformatic data, banking and credit information, and intellectual property. It applies to organizations inside and outside the EU who provide goods and services to those residing within the EU. It contains 99 articles and numerous recitals. But today, I just want to focus on a very specific article, number 25, Data Protection by Design and Default. Article 25 requires organizations to implement appropriate technical and organizational measures, such as pseudonymization, which are designed to implement data protection principles, such as data minimization, in an effective manner and to integrate the necessary safeguards into the processing in order to meet the requirements of this regulation and protect the rights of data subjects. In other words, it obligates an organization that handles personal data of subjects to protect data through technology design. 
GDPR was one of the first laws to codify the idea of the right to be forgotten, also known as the right to erasure. Except in specific circumstances, an individual has the right to request that an organization delete all personal data that it holds. In order to do so, an organization must be able to determine where an individual's data is held at all times, that it is held securely, that it can be removed from systems, and that removal can be certified without undue delay. All of these require that design decisions be made from the beginning of development and that common vulnerabilities that place data at risk be avoided. This includes lawful, fair, and transparent processing, purpose limitation, and storage in a form that allows for identification. As we saw with Secure by Design and Privacy by Design, data security and privacy must be incorporated from the start of processing data. Thus, Article 25 aligns with the OWASP Top 10 as well as OWASP proactive controls. They can be used as guidance in implementing the required controls to ensure data protection by design and default. Let's now look and see the, the same exercise, but apply it to a more recent digital privacy law, which came into effect this year. The California Consumer Privacy Act, or CCPA, is a law specifically aimed at for-profit businesses that meet a threshold set in relation to annual gross profits, number of personal data records, and the percentage of profit generated by sales of consumers' personal data. The law covers a consumer who is a natural person who is a California resident. The law focuses on collecting of the consumer's personal information, and that is buying, renting, gathering, obtaining, receiving, or accessing any personal information pertaining to a consumer by any means. And it places restrictions on how that information is handled. It also covers the selling of personal data, which is defined as renting, disclosing, releasing, disseminating, making available, transferring, or otherwise communicating personal information for monetary or other valuable considerations. The CCPA grants a consumer four basic rights. The right to access user-friendly versions of all data held on that data subject. The right to opt out of data being sold to a third party. The right to deletion of personal data. And the right to equal access and pricing for services. Due to the nature of the CCPA, there are numerous development considerations that are brought to the table. There must be a cradle-to-grave approach in relation to consumers' personal data. As we saw with GDPR, we must know at all times where an individual's data is and be able to extract it from systems. There are numerous commonalities of governance that can be leveraged. Compliance with GDPR does not imply compliance with CCPA and vice versa. Although they do share some common traits, there are specific differences that require consideration. However, we can see that both do share a necessity for websites, applications, and services that ensure security and privacy from the ground up. Using the OWASP Top 10 to support secure coding can be a vital component for your overall compliance with these types of laws and regulations. We've looked at examples of frameworks and regulations with the OWASP Top 10. Now we'll switch gears and look at how we can crosswalk the OWASP Top 10 with a common certification standard. The ISO 27001 defines a set of requirements for information security management systems. The standard obligates an organization to examine its information security risks, threats, and vulnerabilities, and the impact of each. The organization must then assess the risk and determine its risk management plan 
based on its level of risk tolerance, are you going to avoid, accept, or mitigate the risk? They must create and implement information security controls to address the risk management plan and to ensure that the controls are maintained as changes occur in the organization over time. Unlike secure by design and privacy by design, its focus is on all data and its confidentiality, integrity, and accessibility, not just sensitive information. Let's look specifically at an annex of the ISO 27001 A14.2, Security in Development and Support Processes, which directly addresses the development component of information management systems. This annex contains nine controls related to how information security is designed and implemented within the SDLC of systems a purpose it shares with the OWASP top 10. So we're gonna do a quick dive into each and look at an example of how the OWASP top 10 can be applied to that control. So we'll start with number one, secure development policy. The OWASP application security standard can serve as one of the cornerstones of a secure development policy, which focuses on avoiding common technical vulnerabilities. Because the OWASP top 10 is a platform and language agnostic standard, using it as a basis for your secure development policy allows for addressing specific development languages and tools as needed by your organization while maintaining cohesiveness across multiple development groups in the organization. Two, system change control. Identifying and checking security critical code for vulnerabilities, whether those vulnerabilities are accidental or deliberate, is a crucial aspect of system change control and is embedded within the OWASP top 10. Third, technical review of applications after operating platform changes. The interconnectedness of systems means that we get a ripple effect when we make changes to platforms. Mitigation strategies in the top 10 include reviewing application controls and integrity procedures after changes to critical systems. Four, restrictions on changes to software packages. Ensuring the internal integrity and security of applications sites, and services requires restrictions on making changes to software packages and components that are strictly controlled, as indicated in the top 10. Number five, secure system engineering principles. Secure engineering techniques, such as the ones offered in relation to the OWASP top 10, help an organization define programs specific to secure engineering principles. Secure development environment. The OWASP application security standard provides guidance on standard requirements for a secure development environment, such as isolation of development environments from production environments and audits. Outsource development. Outsource development processes should include adherence to the same secure development policies as are enforced within the organization and to secure coding standards as outlined in the top 10. System security testing, number eight. Security testing must occur throughout development and prior to introduction of code to a production environment. The OWASP top 10 and its, and its related application security verification standard can be used as touchstones for your testing program. And finally, number nine, system acceptance testing. Penetration testing prior to final acceptance of systems and updates is a critical final step in security testing for information security management systems. 
the OWASP Top 10, and its sister project, the Offensive Web Testing Framework, are excellent documented foundations for penetration testing. As we've noted, having to implement and maintain multiple initiatives can be challenging, as you can see by the scope of just the five we've covered today. Success relies on knowing the requirements and how they apply to your organization. Today, we have crosswalked five common security and privacy initiatives that many organizations face. Secure by design, privacy by design, GDPR, CCPA, and ISO 27001. Our purpose in doing so was to model how you can find commonalities of governance, and by using this information to avoid silos, build a comprehensive security privacy program when you do so, there can be several advantages. We can lower our costs in time and resources needed to manage and remain compliant by using this information to create unified documentation and training plans. We can provide employees with the information necessary to them as opposed to taking a scattershot approach so that they are reading less and doing more. We can use these commonalities to build an overall security and privacy mindset in your organization, thus providing stronger assurances that employees and clients are protected. And finally, we can battle the image that development teams are siloed in the organization and reinforce the important role they play in the overall security stature of an organization. Thank you for your time and consideration. I hope these ideas help to stimulate your thinking in ways that you can use the OWASP Top 10 as a cornerstone for the creation and growth of your security and privacy initiatives. Please feel free to contact me with any questions. Good luck and stay safe.